Wait for Philip. We're rolling. Okay. Yeah. So, well, welcome to Durham Bros Round Five, our virtual happy hour. This is our fifth installment, and this is a happy hour that I know Dr. Greenberg has been really excited to talk about. Do you want to introduce the topic today, Doc? It's all lasers, all the time. Uh, we've had a quarantine. We've had a pandemic. We've had a bunch of um, really serious events happen in the country and in the community. Uh, it's, it's really been a rough go, but this is sort of a break from all that. Uh, Dr. Cotter and I are both super interested in lasers. Uh, in our clinic, we have four lasers, and we're really excited about talking to you all about what these lasers are, what they can do to improve your life, and show you some great videos that we have. Absolutely. So with the four different lasers we have, there's one that's by definition, a tattoo removal laser. It's the Revlite Q-switch laser. It has a couple different wavelengths that enable us to target specific colors or pigments within the skin. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works. What makes that laser special is how fast it fires. And because of that, we can also use it for other applications, which we'll get into. Probably the cherry on top of the practice is our Smart Skin CO2 laser, which is a nice laser to help resurface the skin for anti-aging, also for scar treatments. Mm -hmm. We have a vascular laser, which is great for some cosmetic treatments to treat blood vessels, as well as medical treatments to treat scars and treat, to treat vascular birthmarks like capillary malformations, port wine stains, things of that nature. Um, and we have a new gem, which is the Elite Plus, a brand new laser hair removal um, device that's going to replace our previous hair removal device. This one has more power, a bigger spot size, and um, Dr. Greenberg has some great footage of that for a little bit later. Yeah, so uh, we, we just got the laser into the office yesterday. We were super uh, excited to have that machine because instead of this 15 millimeter spot, it's a 24 millimeter spot. What that means is you can remove the hair in like half the time. Yeah. So uh, I had my arms done, and my neck, and my back yesterday. I posted that on Instagram. Uh, Dr. Cotter is going to try the machine at some uh, point. We'll see. So as we get into the, the, the discussion today, we'll talk about some of the cosmetic uses for these lasers as well as the medical uses. So no matter what you're using them for, you're using the lasers for good, but some of that good can be medical diseases as well. Yeah, so we just thought uh, that we should start by defining, well, what is a laser? Because you hear all these different discussions about laser, IPL, radio frequency, uh, what's a laser? So, Dr. Cotter, what's a yeah, laser? So, laser is actually an acronym. It stands for light, ampli light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And that really captures what it is. So, laser is a light-based device that gives very, very high power delivery of light for a very specific indication. And that works by capturing the properties of the electromagnetic spectrum using both visible and invisible light. The lasers we use in the clinic are both visible and invisible light lasers. Um, light exists within a spectrum. There's blue light all the way to red light. And the way that lasers work is you can isolate a single wavelength of light, a very, very specific property of the light. And that wavelength corresponds to a color. And the colors of each light. Um, we will go to the colors. The colors for each laser, you can go back to your color wheel and your basic art, and they match their complementary colors. So a green light will be absorbed by a red target, and a red light will be absorbed by a green target. So depending on what you're trying to target in the skin, whether it's a tattoo, or it's a red blood vessel, or it's a brown birthmark, you can use a laser that is complementary to that color. And so based on that, we pick lasers and we isolate their wavelengths. Physicists and engineers and leaders in dermatology who have pioneered the development of medical lasers, such as Rox Anderson at Mass General Hospital and um, others like him, like Matt Avram, who's the director of laser cosmetics at MGH, and my mentor, Arissa Ortiz from UC San Diego, who trained with them, mm -hmm. um, have done great work developing lasers and utilizing their applications for treatments in the skin. So dermatologists are really pioneers in this area, but there's four main properties that really define a laser. Well, when I, when I was training too, uh, Dr. Tina Ulster is a dermatologist in Washington, D.C., and that was the first time, actually, Nate Trickman's a dermatologist in Colorado Springs, and I saw him do laser work, and that got me interested in dermatology, and he said I had to work with Dr. Ulster. So when I was at Georgetown doing general medicine, spent a month with her, wrote a book chapter on lasers, and there are a few people who do laser work. That's what got me interested in it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of great people that do a lot of great laser work. Um, 
it almost seems like science fiction in the skin, but it actually is real life and we can do great things. So there's four basic physical properties of a laser that make a laser a laser, which is in distinction to something like an IPL, which is intense pulse light or broadband light. So a laser is monochromatic. That's what we're talking about. A yep. single wavelength of light. That's what allows for specific targeting in the skin. It's also coherent, meaning all of the wavelengths or the light travels in phase, both in time and in space. So it's all in sync together. It's collimated, so it's traveling parallel from the laser into its target, and it's very, very intense. You need a lot of energy, very, very high power to yield the desired effect if you're trying to destroy a vessel or a tattoo or some other target in the skin. Yeah, so when the guy came yesterday to set up the laser from Sinusure, you know, it took him about four or five hours to, to set it up, to to uh, test the laser, make sure that it worked. I didn't want to test it on a patient first. I, I loved being the guinea pig yesterday, and uh, it was just super powerful. So I like to say, it sounds silly, but lasers are dumb machines. They usually do one thing, but they do that one thing very well. And you pick the target, just like you had mentioned, Dr. Potter, the, the, the color that you're going for. Um, and here is the absorption coefficients of different uh, chromophores in the skin. So whether you're going for hair or blood vessel, you know, deep or superficial blood vessel, you, you choose your machine based on where you're going. Yeah, so like Dr. Greenberg was saying, a chromophore is really the special technical term for what the laser is targeting in the skin. There's really three main native chromophores kind of historically speaking, those are hemoglobin, which is in blood, that's melanin, which gives you the pigment, and that's water. Water's all throughout our body, and you can target each one of those individually based on their specific properties. They absorb different wavelengths of light. There's additional chromophores. One is a tattoo. Tattoo is an exogenous pigment deposited in the skin, and that's a specific chromophore as well. And there's an emerging fifth chromophore called fat. Right, We all have fat, and some of us have more than we want. And there's some new lasers that are able to actually target the fat, heat it up, and decrease fat content in the skin. So for the sake of demonstration, this is overlying actually the absorption spectrum for hemoglobin in the blood, these red lines here, whether it has oxygen on it or doesn't have oxygen, the absorption spectra are slightly different. Also melanin, which is pretty stable across the absorption spectrum with a few distinctions, and then water. So knowing what molecules absorb differently at different wavelengths of light, you can pick different lasers to treat different things. Um, and that's exactly what we do. And going back to our complementary colors, for example, if you want to target something that's red and absorbs really well um, something that's red, you want a green or a yellow laser because those are going to be complementary and you can balance those out. And in fact, the first medical laser that was developed was a pulse dye laser, which is this yellow laser that really excellently targets hemoglobin at this high peak right here. Yeah, and the, uh, the melanin down here is lower and it's higher up here. So uh, if somebody is darker skin and you want to get rid of hair, you're better off uh, using this ND YAG laser on them because you will burn them with the laser that's a 755 and that's what the laser is that we bought yesterday. It has two lasers within one device. Uh, it's a hair removal machine but the 755 is for lighter skin types, the 1064 is for darker skin types. We had uh, two different lasers before that we were using but now it's all in one machine and with a bigger spot size meaning that whether you have dark or light skin this laser can go fast and get rid of the hair. It's fantastic. So. Uh, it's nice to have that. Pretty soon you're going to have no hair left anywhere, <laughs> anywhere off your, your face, Dr. Huberg. <laughs> um, so I think we've kind of illustrated, and this table does that as well. This is from a paper Tina Alster wrote in 2003. And so fast forward 17 years, you can imagine there's even more lasers available and an even larger, more dizzying array of applications. So more lasers, more wavelengths, more uses. Um, and combining those uses is a really rewarding thing to do as a dermatologist. We touched a little bit on the lasers in our practice. We have four different lasers and they run different wavelengths and mm -hmm. we'd like to maybe get into kind of how we use them in practice here. Yeah, uh, two, two interesting points. Uh, you can see that the number 1064 is here and the number 1064 is there. And you may wonder, well, it, it's the same wavelength. Why is there two different, why are there two different machines? Uh, this laser fires super fast. It's a Q-switch laser. It's a nanosecond pulse and it, it fires so fast that any big target it won't hit. But a small target like tattoo ink or superficial pigment, it can go after that. Yeah. So 
that gets into some of the nitty gritty of physics and how lasers work. And they work based on a theory of selective photothermolysis, which to, to get into it is an extensive talk on physics, but the long and the short of it is to destroy a target, you need to specifically target it and you need to heat it to a point that it gets destroyed without destroying the surrounding tissue. So it's really, really small chromophores like tattoo ink mm -hmm. need a really, really small amount of time to heat it. Whereas a longer pulse laser like the ND Yags over here on this side, they pulse in millisecond ranges, which are one one thousandth of a second. These are nanosecond lasers all the way over here on the, the far, well, my right, your left, yeah. on the Q-switch laser tattoo removal. And it all relates to the size of the particle. All right. So uh, we're going to start with tattoo removal. Uh, you can see on my arms here, I had my tattoos removed. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Those were uh, fake sleeves. I, I don't have a tattoo. Uh, one of my friends is Erica Dunlap. She was Miss America in 2004. And she came to the clinic and has had uh, laser tattoo removal done. And <laughs> so we're talking. This is the laser, and it's going to be firing on a tattoo on her ankle. <laughs> it hurts, and it's shocking. Okay, okay. okay. Oh my God, it's gone! Yeah. That's almost gone. It's not really gone. I didn't hurt that bad. It was just a shock. It, okay, fine. You're doing great, Eric. I know. You're so sweet, but I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, yeah, I got my balls. I'm ready. She's going to require a couple, pull, a couple treatments. The treatments are usually spaced uh, six weeks apart. Great. And there you go. So beautiful. Even laser. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> I'm so pleased. I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, I'm back to myself. Yay! Got it. So, <laughs> yeah, so she thought it was gone. She still needs to come back. If the tattoo was placed by somebody who's not a professional, like a, a prison tattoo, a garage tattoo. Uh, you know, some people will uh, just try to dip some ink and make and make a tattoo. It'll go away much more quickly because it's not professional. If your artist is really heavy-handed, it's going to take more times. So absolutely. Uh, here's one tattoo that we had in the clinic. It's not yet done. At our clinic, we treat uh, after 14 treatments. We don't charge anymore. Uh, did you have a question? Yeah, a follow on Instagram. Diddylicious underscore Madero Therapy asks how many treatments to remove tattoos? On average, it takes 14 times, and those are spaced six weeks apart. Some people, like I said, if your tattoo was not professionally done, it may go away more quickly. If you had a professional tattoo, it may, it, it may take longer. Uh, this gentleman uh, here with the skull and crossbones was in the Navy when he got his tattoo, and I think that tattoo cost him maybe $20 at the time, and the artist was super heavy-handed. So we've treated him a number of times, and it's now almost totally gone. Yeah. Um, the, the tattoo laser that we have, the Rev Light, and it's seen here pictured, is also good for uh, it, it's best for black and red ink. The red ink, and it's like Dr. Cotter had said before, based on the, the wavelengths, uh, it can target black or red ink the best. But also, uh, the tattoo was uh, blue and yellow and red, and you can see that that one's gone over here on the left, on the left wrist. So it can really target any, um, any skin type and any skin color because the laser fires so fast, it just shatters that ink. Perfect. Uh, this is uh, my friend Mario Barth. He's a tattoo artist. He had a ring tattoo on his finger, and he's getting a second time uh, the right. tattoo removed. Ow! The <laughs> second time. Really? Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> and so for him, uh, and, and for others, when they get a ring tattoo, a lot of times, whether it's the person that they're now dating or the person they're now married to, uh, they want that ring uh, removed for obvious reasons. Uh, the next image you're going to see is I call the girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> the laser is targeting the black. It leaves the normal skin untouched, but it's touching the target. And again, these are very small particle sizes. It's like if you had a big boulder full of ink and you were taking a little chisel and you're just chiseling it away. It leaves the hair untouched. So I've had laser facials done 
uh, where it's left the hair on my face, but it has destroyed the pigment because the pigment's smaller size. So than that's that. a really good point for an alternative application for the Q-switch lasers, which are these laser tattoo removals. Sometimes I'll see patients, I know you do too, Dr. Greenberg, who have ingrown hairs in their beard area or on the back of their neck, something called pseudofolliculitis barbie here along the beard area or acne chelidalis nuke on the posterior neck. And one treatment for that very difficult to treat disease is just to do laser hair removal, so there's no longer a need to shave. But not all guys are going to say, well, some days I do want my beard, maybe I should leave it. So you can actually pull out your Q-switch laser and you can zap those hairs and it shifts them from a growing phase to a shedding phase and they'll shed those hairs temporarily. It's temporary laser hair removal and it'll give the beard or the neck area some time to rest and heal, but the hairs will still grow back. So it's an alternative to doing true laser hair removal. You can do temporary laser hair removal with your Q-switch. Super cool. Uh, this here is uh, a friend's mom, and she had permanent ink on her, her eyebrows. And when you destroy permanent ink, it can turn white initially, and then it goes away. So that's a normal response, but it takes a lot of time, uh, depending on, again, depending on the artist. So, so that's normal. Yeah, cosmetic tattoos can be a real challenge. Um, and sometimes, like Dr. Greenberg says, they, they'll change color and then you'll have to try to treat through that and sometimes they'll change color again and you can be left with a very odd array of colors. Um, they're, they're definitely difficult to treat. Talking about kind of things to watch out for related to laser tattoo, I mean, I think one thing that's important is to always check and ask a patient before you're going to use a Q-switch laser if they've ever had gold therapy, yep. which you know is an old school therapy, particularly for diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, because you can actually zap the skin and all of a sudden it can change colors and that's something called chrysiasis. And, um, that is not able to be treated through the way that a cosmetic tattoo can. Yeah, it's, strange. it's been a while, but I, I used to treat a patient who had Argyria, and he had taken silver, colloidal silver, and his skin was blue. And so we were using the laser to get rid of the blue pigment that had been deposited by the oh, silver. Wow. That's great. Yeah, that was really cool. It was super painful for him. I felt awful. Uh, despite putting topical numbing and doing nerve blocks, uh, that was uncomfortable. For most people, uh, t laser tattoo removal, it's quick and it isn't all that, it's painful, but it doesn't last very long. You saw the, the girl with the dragon tattoo. When you have more ink, it's more painful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Connor wanted me to keep it brief, but I figured I have a <laughs> ton of pictures for the Q-Switch Shag, and this is me getting the laser facial. <laughs> And so what she's doing is, is painting my face with the, uh, the laser, and it heats the tissue up. It gets red at, at the end point, and it is destroying some of the fine uh, pigment. I've had about 45 of these treatments done. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to stimulate uh, collagen growth as well. He's going to be ready for prom. <laughs> I'll be ready for prom. After another 45 more. <laughs> I think the more I drink, the funnier your jokes get. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Drink some more. Um, so you can also use the Q-switch laser to treat pigmented lesions in the skin. Superficial, benign pigmented lesions like freckles or lentigines, ephalids, things that are not harmful but can be sometimes very bothersome, as well as birthmarks like cafe au lait macules, which are a little harder to treat but can have benefit. You treat them like they're little tiny tattoos, and you use a tattoo removal laser. Um, so here's a patient that had some freckles on his hands treated with the tattoo removal. He also had CO2 laser done at the same time oh. to boost collagen production. Um, but you can see nicely how well those brown spots respond just four weeks later. That's and interesting. Then, I've never used that combination of CO2 after... Oh, I love that combo. So I'll do that for a lot of patients who, huh. have, who have brown spots as well as wrinkles, sun damage, because I figure they're there for the CO2 already. We'll add on the Q-switch laser to treat their superficial benign pigmented lesions, and we minimize their downtime by doing them together. So I'll you also Q-switch first and then you CO2 yeah, second. Q-switch first and CO2 second. I'll also combine some of our red lasers for people that have unwanted blood vessels. So I'll do, um, for example, the Synergy vascular lasers yep. first, and I'll treat their telangiectasias on the face, get the reds first, then we'll do the browns afterwards, and then we'll do the CO2 at the end um, for patients that want to really maximize the results in a single day. So you've done three in one day? Oh yeah, absolutely. He says, I've done two. I've done, um, like for scars, I'll do the Synergy laser for blood vessels, and then I will fire with the CO2 laser to resurface. And yeah. uh, I haven't done three.
That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a hat trick. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna move on now to our our synergy laser. And synergy, this this is a laser that has two uh, different wavelengths in it, and it has a 585 pulse dye uh, laser combined with a 1064 NDEAG laser. And uh, this gentleman here, it took a couple treatments. But I treated his nose, these, these nasal phalangiectasia. It is perfect for this type of uh, treatment. Same with this gentleman here. This is the before down there, and that's the after up top. And you can see uh, when you're lasering, the vessels just disappear. So I put a couple of TikTok videos, and our YouTube, uh, LV Derm YouTube channel has a bunch of these videos as well. Yeah, no, it's a great treatment. <clears throat> One thing you have to watch out for with the NDAG on the ALA, if you're not careful with your power, and Dr. Greenberg clearly here is an expert and did a great job, is actually alar notching because the lasers um, sometimes can penetrate deeply enough to damage the cartilage and it leads to a little notching. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. Yep. This is a patient that I treated who was very self-conscious about this birthmark. It's a capillary malformation on the posterior neck. And he'd had it his whole life and I said, you know, well, we can certainly help you with that. He wore, wear cover makeup and was very, very bothered by it. This is after three treatments spaced about four weeks apart using our just the pulse dye laser. Very simple treatment, very safe, effective. He had no side effects, and he was so happy with his results. Yeah, and, and in somebody like this, you know, with his skin coloring, you could use the 585 and the 1064, but if you were darker skinned, uh, you could only do the 585, and sometimes even that, you could, you'd could you want to be a little nervous about Yeah, sometimes you have to be very careful, yeah. Yeah, sometimes we'll do a test spot first, just to make sure. Uh, so this is me. Uh, you know, I, I'm vain, and these are my veins. Uh, this is the before, and this is the immediately after. And you can see the, the coagulated vessels, the, the redness that's shown up. The vessels has been shattered. Uh, some people use compressive garments, some people do wraps, others uh, just let it heal on its own. Uh, there's a couple different theories on, on how to go about it. I usually just let it heal on its own. We're not doing in our clinic uh, major vessels, although we could. Uh, it's super painful to laser on a really big vessel. Even these on my ankle it didn't feel very good. Uh, Venus Lakes. Some people have uh, bluish discoloration on the lip. When you press down on it, it disappears. And when you lift off, it comes back. So uh, this lady, I had uh, lasered the uh, the pulse dye yag. Yeah, that's a great treatment. And you know, we do fillers in the clinic, and there's no guarantee when you do a filler that you won't bruise. It, it's a known side effect, especially in the lips, which are so vascular. Absolutely, I think it's a really nice service that we just offer as a no charge thing, yep. a courtesy for our patients. If we're injecting you or doing a procedure and you get a bruise, just come back the next day or one to two days later and we'll treat it with our pulse dye laser for no charge and it helps the bruises resolve much more quickly than they otherwise would. I'd like to say that I never bruise anybody, but the reality <laughs> is if you inject enough, you'll bruise somebody um, and sometimes it's someone you care a lot about. <laughs> like yeah, it's give, usually those people you know, who I've get bruised. I've my, my wife a fat lip with the filler and yeah. I've given my mother-in-law a black eye with filler. I mean, so, you know, it's always someone you care the most about, but it happens. And the nice thing about being in a full, a full service medical and cosmetic practices can handle any complication, um, including simple little things like these bruises. I mean, I probably get one filler complication from the outside every month that someone comes yeah. in either from a medical spa, a dental office, a plastic surgery office, another germ office, um, asking for help. And so we're, we're really fortunate that here, as sports certified dermatologists, we're able to address all of those issues. Yeah, I like to say if you're not able to treat the complication, you shouldn't do the procedure. Yeah. Uh, th there's no, at least in, in, in my practice, I'm only injecting hyaluronic acid fillers, which are uh, dissolvable if, if, they, if things don't go well. But even then, you can still necrose a vessel, even though it's dissolvable, uh, just by injecting. Uh, one of the other light devices that we use is the light stem for somebody who's bruising like this. Now that is not a laser. That has three different wavelengths of light. So again, we, we, we had talked about a laser being just one wavelength of light. But the light stem can help stimulate um, can, can help stimulate wound healing, and that's a red light and amber light and an infrared light. Uh, this one here is somebody who had really bad acne. The acne had resolved, but there was some excuse me, there was some scarring on the back, redness, 
some hyperpigmentation, and then these atrophic scars. So for this patient, I did the Synergy laser, and it helped to get rid of some of the redness. It's a great treatment for redness. There's no, really absolutely. nothing else like it. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, I'll do that sometimes for patients that are about to start Accutane. They'll do a, a series of laser treatments, maybe a few weeks before starting Accutane to kind of jumpstart it. Yep. And that way when their skin starts clearing with Accutane, we've already got a couple lasers under our belt. Yeah, and, and this picture here is a friend of mine, uh, Chloe, and I had lasered a scar. Uh, the laser works really well. I had written a book chapter on the use of lasers for scar and stretch marks. That was with Dr. Ulster. And, uh, the, you can treat stretch marks with this laser, and you can do that in combination with like a Venus Viva, which is radio frequency, or the stretch marks can also be treated with a carbon dioxide laser. Uh, we've done, it's Las Vegas, there's a lot of uh, women who get breast enhancement, and so uh, a lot of times there are scars that can be treated with the pulse dye and the CO2, usually in the same day. Yeah, almost every scar I treat gets treated with both the pulse dye and the CO2 laser. Mm -hmm. This is an example of kind of some of that using your laser for medical good, and it's also an example of alar notching. So in the top picture, this is the alar rim, the right alar rim of a woman who had a basal cell cancer that I biopsied. Dr. Greenberg knows pretty much across the board, if someone has a skin cancer, I recommend surgery. Mm -hmm. Get it cut out, make it gone, gone forever, usually healed up within one to two weeks. Problem solved. Not everyone wants surgery, and there's other options. Other options are radiation therapy, you can use topical chemotherapy creams or topical amiquimod cream. You can even use lasers to treat basal cells. Generally, I wouldn't recommend using a laser to treat a basal cell on the face. I definitely don't recommend using them to treat a basal cell on the ear or the nose because those are high-risk areas and there's cartilage. But for someone that absolutely doesn't want to have surgery, says I'm not doing it, there's no chance, I don't want to fuss around with those creams, I don't want to do radiation, Laser treatment's a really good option, and this is a treatment that was pioneered by one of my mentors, Dr. Rissa Ortiz from UC San Diego, when she was actually a laser cosmetics fellow at MGH, and she's great. She's dual board certified in laser, dual fellowship trained in lasers and in Mohs surgery. Oh, wow. So this is a person who has any option to treat yeah, anything she cut, any way she wants. could have cut this one out, but the defect here I think would have been worse yeah, than your result. It would have been a big one, and so I talked to her, this patient, I said, look, I can use our ND AG laser at a very high high power, high enough that it's probably going to damage the cartilage a little bit, but we've got probably a greater than 90% chance of clearing this basal cell based on studies that have been, patients have been followed out for a year and a little bit longer. And this is a great result. A couple months later, she has just a well-healed scar and a little alar notching, and she was really happy with this result. Yeah, it's, it's a really difficult area in which to work. Obviously, I would have done a Miquimod in this case, a Miquimod's topical immunomodulator. Uh, the area would get red and irritated, the redness and irritation would go away, but it's not a guarantee and they can recur. Yeah, and you can certainly use the Miquimod in combination. In fact, this yep. patient was a little nervous, and so even after it was healed, she elected to do a short course of a Miquimod, yep. kind of as an adjuvant therapy, um, which is, you know. Did it light up? It did, yeah, oh, it wow. reacted. The surrounding skin really did react, but yeah. the reality is when you put a Miquimod on sun-damaged skin, whether there's a yep. skin cancer there or not, you'll get a reaction. It can be very unpredictable. Yeah, the Miquimod's, he knows <laughs> I just love that cream. It's approved for uh, pre-cancers, skin cancers, and genital warts. So, you know, I've had patients call me up from the pharmacy, doctor, why are you giving me a genital wart cream for my skin cancer? And it's a very <laughs> awkward conversation, but I usually warn them beforehand about that. I, I do my best. Oh yeah, so summer's ready, and this is gonna be a, a little conversation about our laser hair removal. If you're tan, you can't get laser hair removal done because the lasers, like I said, they're dumb machines. They do one thing, they do one thing really well. They're gonna target pigment. And if you have activated pigment, the laser's gonna target that, it will burn you. So you know, don't be cute and try and say, well, I really, I didn't, I didn't uh, go in the sun, wink, wink, because you will get burned. Uh, Dr. Cotter, this so is yours. This is, our, this is our laser hair removal slide section. Um, you can see me here treating a patient of mine. He actually had a leg amputation for a bone cancer, and he was having a lot of difficulty with recurrent folliculitis and bacterial infections because he's a very active man and likes to wear his prosthesis to walk around and work out and do lots of activities. And what happens is you can get occlusion of the hair follicles and friction rubbing on the prosthesis and the skin, and that can lead to pain, it can lead to infections, and I told him, I said, hey, I think we can get this taken care of for you. And we wrote a letter to his insurance. We got them to approve laser hair removal, covered under his insurance, and we've been treating him, and he's been doing great. And that's a little trick I learned from um, 
Dr. Captain Shoemaker, when he was mm. the chair of dermatology at the U.S. Um, naval base um, down in San Diego, when I was a resident, um, he was a big proponent of the Wounded Warrior Project and kind of that term, using lasers for good, picking up your laser hair removal to treat sure. hair, excess hair in an amputee, using your CO2 laser for scars. Um, and that's something that I kind of love that idea from him, refined it with some of my mentors at UC San Diego. Um, and there's been a lot of people that have worked really hard in this area, and I'm just proud to be able to continue that good work here in Las Vegas. No, I know how appreciative this gentleman was of, of you being able to do that for him. Uh, some people, and boy, you never know who's going to be hairy. Uh, <laughs> it just happens. And a lot of times it's an ethnic thing. A lot of times it can be a, a, hormonal thing. a hormonal thing where you have a medical condition and that's why you have increased hair. And when you start growing hair, there are certain questions that we ask uh, just to make sure that there's not an underlying medical issue that's causing the hair growth. Polycystic ovary syndrome mm -hmm. can do it. There's a couple different disease states that can cause hair growth. But uh, this woman here, and this is from Sinus Shore, these photos, you know, had extra hair in the chin beard area and that was uh, gotten rid of, and this in the upper lip area. That's a great result. Yep. And so this is me yesterday. <laughs> um, it's kind of embarrassing. You know, I should eat some more meals and uh, maybe lift the weight. That said, this here is me Vegas, uh, getting hair removal. I guess I'm narrating. Dr. Greenberg is <laughs> officially the first patient to be treated with our brand new laser. The Sinusure Elite Plus, which is a workhorse for laser hair removal. It's got two different wavelengths, a Good 755 millimeter or nanometer yep. Alexandrite laser and a 1064 nanometer ND YAG laser. This laser has got a massive spot size up to 24 millimeters. Yeah, and we're on the 24 millimeter now, so it makes the hair go away uh, quicker. Oops. Sorry. It's a problem with the live. Um, we'll put it here. It just hit play. Yeah. There we go. Okay. A 1064 nanometer ND YAG laser. This laser has got a massive spot size up to 20. I just wanted to show some yeah, of the hairs here now, that had so burned onto the skin away. because they were a little too long. Quicker because it's a bigger spot. How does it feel, Doc? It doesn't feel great, but I'm happy I'm doing it. Have you done any numbing? Uh, no, I don't do numbing. And then what are we doing here to protect the skin? What is this coming oh, so out of we it? have the Zimmer Chiller at about an eight. Wow, look at look how strong that air. It just blows the air out. Maybe I need to be the next person. Hey, you're the next one. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Michaela's getting all the hairs gone, and we'll be ready for Derm Bros Live tomorrow at 5 p.m. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, there you go. Prophetic. Um, the... Uh, the laser, when it fires, uh, it fires in the, the millisecond range, but that cooling, that cold air, really chills the skin so you don't burn it, because without chilling the skin, you're going to get a burn. Yeah, collateral damage. Yeah. And a couple days ago, uh, there was talk about using ultrasound gel. I don't get the ultrasound gel put on me personally, but it is an option, and that can super chill the skin. Yeah, and that works as a nice heat reservoir to absorb the excess heat. Yep. So for mine, you can see here it says the wavelength of light, 755 nanometers. Uh, the, the fluence, how much power, that was 11 joules per centimeter squared, and the pulse width, it was small, uh, 5 milliseconds. So these are pretty standard sec settings for a large spot size 755 laser. But settings aren't what matters. It's the endpoints, oh, right? For sure. so, so every laser is different. Even the same laser, like yep. an Elite Plus in our office versus someone else's, or an Elite Plus pre-service, post-service, the amount of power it truly delivers with any given setting may vary. So it's about knowing safe endpoints mm -hmm. and watching for those endpoints. Otherwise, you may end up with an unwanted complication. Yeah, and as you're lasering, you pause, you look, to, you look at the skin, and you see, is it responding appropriately? Because you don't want to get burned. Anybody can get burned, and at the end of this talk today, I'm going to show just a couple patients that we have treated in our clinic from other clinics who've been burned and really want to make sure that whoever is treating you knows what they're doing. Stephanie? Oh, yeah. Um, there were two questions. One um, was how many treatments do you recommend for a laser facial and what is the healing time? And then another one is how many treatments do you recommend for laser hair removal on a Brazilian? Do you want to take the laser facial? Question? Sure. So the laser facial is really an ongoing treatment thing. Uh, so you probably want 12 treatments. Those would be spaced every two to four weeks apart, probably every two weeks for the first two months, and then once a month. Once you reach the color of the skin that you like, once the pigment has been gone and you don't have any freckling or hyperpigmentation, then you stop. Yeah. 
And for laser hair removal, I generally recommend a series of an initial six treatments. Depending on the etiology, some people will be more or less likely to need maintenance treatments. So usually I figure six treatments, you can have about 85% decrease in the total hair volume. But what starts to happen is you're left with more fine hairs that become harder and harder to treat. And then if you have a hormonal driver, like Dr. Greenberg had mentioned, polycystic ovarian syndrome, there's another condition, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and other hyperandrogenism states that can continue to drive additional hair growth. Patients with those conditions may need maintenance treatments every four to six weeks for in perpetuity, for, yeah. for, for ongoing purposes. I mean, some people are just hairier than others. We say on average it takes six times, but uh, depending on those other factors, uh, things, things can change. This, is, this talks about uh, the 755 being for, for lighter skin types, the 1064 for darker skin types. And even that can change. Uh, you can't tell by looking at somebody what their ethnicity is. Uh, and sometimes you may start with one laser and want to switch to another laser based on their response. That's why it's important to have somebody who's actually watching what's going on and isn't just blindly you know, firing the machine. Absolutely. <clears throat> These are patients who uh, have been treated with this uh, 755 nanometer laser, and it only works for super light skin types. If you have, uh, if you're a type two, that's that's as as uh, dark as you can be to use this laser. Yeah, which in contradistinction, our Q switch laser, yep. you can use in more a, a wider variety of patients. Yeah, but pretty still, much anybody can get the Q switch. But still, does have a risk of hyperpigmentation. Always, yeah. Th th there's always a risk anytime you do anything. This is my favorite machine. <laughs> so uh, this is a fractional CO2 laser. The laser is a workhorse that burns holes in skin and then the skin tightens up. I had always wanted to get a CO2 laser procedure performed with uh, w knowing that the quarantine was coming uh, before that happened. I had asked Dr. Cotter and I had told him, I said, after you've done a certain number of procedures and it was 10 for me, I will let you laser me, but not before 10. So 10 procedures happened, and I said, I'm ready. I want, I want my CO2 laser because I want to look younger. To be really clear, he meant 10 full-face fractional CO2 procedures yes. here in this office. In this office. It didn't matter what <laughs> he's done this, before. With this I wanted laser, to see what he'd done. Not scar <laughs> treatments, not anything, not hands. Nope. He wanted 10 of 10 here in this office yep. with his laser. And, and, uh, and, and I think I was at number eight, and he was like, all right, let's get going. I want my laser. <laughs> But he's absolutely right. So for, this is a fractional CO2 device, and CO2 lasers absorb water, and it absorbs water, and in doing so, it superheats the skin and creates these microthermal zones, which you can see here. There's vaporization. In this particular histo, uh, this photomicrograph of a histology slide of the epidermis down into the dermis, and you can see the ablated skin, but there's also what's called a thermal effect. So you have extension outside of what's actually ablated, due to heating of the skin, and this is also gonna stimulate collagen production. Yeah, and, and the first time I ever saw one of these procedures performed, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that somebody would have this done, and this says fractional CO2. When I was in my training, uh, way before Dr. Cotter was, they uh, did full face CO2 without the fractionation. Yeah, the and this fractionation here uh, just is, is the size of the pitch of the spots that burn holes yeah. in the skin. So to be really clear, the cool thing about this smart skin CO2 laser that we have here is it's very titratable. We can adjust the settings and here's what's giving you an idea in terms of how fractional it truly is. I think of fractional lasers as like aerating your lawn. You can make all these little pokes and so depending on how aggressive we want to be we can tighten up the spot size um, from something that's a little wider to something that's a little tighter and the tighter you get the lower this number is for the spot size. The amount of space in between each laser pulse, the closer you get fully ablative. And there's actually even ways to get to fully ablative settings with this smart skin CO2. Yeah, I, I've never gone fully ablative. No, I mean, I, I, I don't recommend that for most people under most indications, but it can be really helpful. Sometimes for perioral wrinkles, you can be a lot more aggressive in the perioral area. One of the side effects of going full on CO2 is that you can uh, depigment someone. So you can make them... Uh, yeah. Pigmented yeah, the, the original cases that came out, people would have porcelain white skin, be very smooth, very beautiful, but um, 
it would not have any pigment left. Yeah, so you have to be really mindful of that. I think one of the benefits of fractional lasers is, as you can see, all of this normal skin around it, it has reservoirs of stem cells that help regenerate and rejuvenate the skin much more quickly. So the downtime for fractional lasers is much less than it is with fully ablated lasers. Yep. Oh yeah, so this was uh, me when we used to have hockey. Whoops. And uh, the, the woman here is getting her full face done and uh, you can see me uh, standing above her without a mask because we didn't have to wear masks, uh, although some people do for CO2. Uh, there's a smoke evacuator that's connected to the device that's sucking out the plume. And here you can see the way the laser is firing, it doesn't fire in a line and it doesn't fire up and down. It's a random firing so that it heats the tissue in a way that, that is uh, kinder to the tissue. You won't get superheating of the tissue. Absolutely. She opted not to get her eyes lasered. I told Dr. Cotter I wanted my eyes lasered, so uh, not the eyes, but the eyelids. So he put a topical numbing in my eye, in my uh, on my eyeball, and then put eye shields into my eyes and lasered around here as well. Uh, I use one setting here on the face, and then around the eyes is a different setting because the skin is so thin. Yep. And here's the before. You can see some of the hyperpigmentation, the lines, and here's the after. And see how some of these lines have just faded. And it's, a, it's an amazing treatment. I, I don't know what else to say, except it's one of my favorite devices that there is. Yeah, it's a great device. It has a lot of diverse applications. And you can adjust the settings depending on how aggressive you want to be and how much downtime a patient's able to have. Obviously, the more aggressive you are, the more risk, but the more reward. Also, the, the more aggressive your settings are, the more downtime a patient may have. Yep. So if someone needs maybe a week or less of downtime, I'll be much more conservative. They'll heal much faster, but they'll need more treatments overall. I know when we did yours, Dr. Greenberg, you wanted to be a little more I intense. think it was as aggressive as you've ever been. Uh, this is around the eyes, and really try to go down to the eyelid margin here, and you can see that I've achieved that. Uh, I've learned because if you uh, don't cover the eyelashes, they can look like Kermit, you know, get rid of the eyelashes completely. And when we do this, we put in topical numbing yep. and we put in a metal contact shield because lasers can cause blindness. So you can't laze with inside the orbital rim safely without taking standard precautions, which requires a metal eye shield in our practice. Right, and you saw me when I was getting it done. I was wearing uh, eyewear for all the lasers. Each laser, because of the wavelength of light, has its own set of protective eyewear. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, pictures. <clears throat> when this patient came into the clinic, I had told her she needed a facelift that I couldn't help her, and she told me that she didn't want to go under general anesthesia and that she really just wanted to get her wrinkles gone with a laser. So I did uh, two laser treatments, and you can see that all of this wrinkling, it, it, it certainly tightened up a bit. Uh, she could benefit from filler here, pull the volume forward, and multiple more treatments, maybe even like a radio frequency device, a micro needling device. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, we didn't do PRP. Certainly now, I would add PRP to her treatment. And you mentioned you mentioned facelift. I mean, for yep. a patient that doesn't want a facelift but wants a little lifting, um, I've been doing a lot more insta lifts. Oh yeah. Um, which is a really great thread lift. We just do local anesthesia, a few little pokes, really just one hole to enter yep. in with the threads. And so for someone like this who has gotten a really nice result already from her laser, I would probably just place one thread here, here, and here, as well as one going this direction. And so we can get lift throughout the mid face and lifting up to better define the jawline. And that's a 30 to 45 minute in office procedure yep. under just local anesthesia. You're hanging out, you're talking to us, you walk right out with the lift and it continues to improve over time. I agree. Would you have lifted, would you have put the lifts here or well, so, is that just too So you have to wrinkly? be careful because you don't want someone who has too much laxity or too much heaviness in the face yep. for a lift because you're not going to actually have enough to grab onto. You may have a little more wrinkling or dimpling with the threads. I think at this point she would do great with the lift. Here she might be a little underwhelmed because there's so much laxity. Yeah, I agree with you and, and I think... Um, you know, were, were, were we to have this discussion at this point, for sure, mm -hmm. that would be a great uh, treatment for her, uh, along with repeated treatments. So you can see that not everybody, you know, we aren't all the same. There's not one cookie cutter approach Absolutely. to these people. And there's a lot of options for everyone. 
uh, not necessarily laser. All, it is all lasers all the time. <laughs> but in this case, maybe you'd add a radio frequency or a microneedling <laughs> on top of your laser. But this brings up a really interesting point. It's how do you combine treatments? How do you yeah. work lasers into your injectables? And how do you work them into other treatments, microneedling and RF microneedling yeah, and like a maintenance, doing an insta lift. I, I think maintenance treatments, so do maybe a couple CO2s a year with maintenance radio frequency and microneedling in between. Yeah. And you know, there are different ways we can combine multiple different treatments safely in the same day, um, but other things can't be combined in the same day. So I like to talk to my patients, figure out what their goals are, come up with a treatment plan. Because if someone says, this bothers me the most, we're going to address that the first and the most seriously. and. You have to be careful with when you place your filler and your neurotoxin and when you do your lasers. So having an informed approach is really helpful. Yeah, and even you know, Botox here would be fantastic. Uh, we have a seven years younger package, which is uh, Botox and filler and two CO2 lasers. <laughs> that would be, at this point, you could do seven years younger. At this point, it's a lot of treatments. This is not a seven years younger candidate, I don't believe. I just like to tell folks that we want to help them look the best and feel the best at their age. Yeah, and we're not going to make you look like somebody else. <laughs> you're going to look like the best version of you. So you're, you're not going to look like a different person. You'll look like a better version of who you are. Absolutely. Here's a patient that I treated recently, and he kind of came in with that exact same sentiment, Dr. Greenberg. He said, hey, I just want to look better. He brought in some pictures of what he looked like 20 years ago, and we talked about a lot of different things. And this is a nice result. I think this was a 12-week follow-up post um, two different lasers we did the tattoo removal laser for his brown spots, combined that with a CO2 laser. He came in four weeks after, he was very happy with his results, and we talked about doing a little additional augmentation. We did a couple syringes of uh, filler in the mid face, and this was him at his 12 week follow up, and he was so happy, he felt very refreshed, um, and he's doing great now. Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic result. Even you know the colors are improved. I would have considered doing just some zapping of these little seborrheic keratoses the DPNs, but your CO2 laser is going to get rid of that. Yeah, doing the doing the two different treatments together, I think it really took care of it. Mm -hmm. And this is his profile. That I mean, looks great. I mean, just combining the tattoo removal laser with the CO2 really did a nice job cleaning up the browns. The CO2 did some nice improvement on his fine lines and his wrinkles, and then doing the filler gave him some nice lift in the mid face. One thing I really like doing is patients will come in and they'll ask about nasolabial folds and I like to always make sure that I address top to bottom. So address the cheeks before you address the nasolabials because when you do just the cheeks, you get a little lift throughout the nasolabial folds as well and, and he's a really great example of that. So did you do the Q-switch YAG here before you did mm -hmm. the CO2? Yep. same day I did the Q-switch yep. and the YAG on all of his little brown spots on the face. So and then you individually pulse those? Mm -hmm. Yep. Not, so not a laser facial, but just not like, a laser facial. It's just very specific settings, uh -huh. just for the the benign pigmented lesions, which he, yeah. he probably would not have been appropriate for the long pulsed um, NDAG or the Alex no, that, with his skin that some of the lighter skin patients do well with. No, that's, that's a great look for him. And this is probably my my favorite patient, <laughs> my favorite patient that I treated. Lucky number oh eleven here. Yeah, yeah. And so this is Dr. Greenberg immediately before his full face um, fractional CO2, his Kybella and his lip filler, which you probably do for some more uh, lip filler, Dr. Yeah, you're up you, for sir. it. Um, mm -hmm. We just did a little touch. And I think this was maybe one, one or two months post. Yeah, I think this is at least a month out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm super happy that I had the procedure done. Um, it's, it's, it was a little bit nerve wracking. There's some videos that you can see of me getting it done. I had the laughing gas, the Pronox, uh, for the procedure, which uh, it's an analgesic, so it takes away your fear of getting a procedure done. Yeah, you were a lot of fun that day. Yeah, I really, <laughs> it was a great day. I really appreciate you doing that for me. Yeah, you had pretty good skin to begin with, so yeah. there wasn't a lot to improve upon, but definitely your face looks more refreshed, more plump, the fine lines are lessened. Yeah, I think you know we could do probably one or two more CO2s in the eyelids. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah um, we should pause for just a second and thank uh, Get Joe Cheesecake. Uh, he brought us some cheesecakes, so it's get underscore Joe underscore cheesecakes, and these are the cheesecakes he brought from the Durham Bros for our event today. And they look delicious. They look like there's some fruity pebbles on top and Let's all see. kinds of yummy. I just want to make sure it's okay. No, you're gonna test it. You should probably it. try one of each. Um, yeah, you should. Do they? The fruity pebble one is absolutely delicious. And what are these other ones? Is it a raspberry and a lemon or a mango? Strawberry. Strawberry. Looks really good. That's very good. I heard they're, they're, what, these are fat free. Yeah, right. Like that Seinfeld episode. 
Fat free, zero calories. Zero no calories, sugar. Fat free, no sugar. Anyway, yeah, get your cheesecakes. Check them out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It says, what med do you need today? And boy, it's more like, what med do you need this year? Uh, hope, courage, strength, faith, love, patience. Every year I make a goals list. I had uh, 20 goals scheduled for 2020. Thought that was a good move. I then uh, tore that up, and I made two goals. One was to survive. One was to run the Vegas Half Marathon in an hour and a half, and they've canceled the Vegas Half Marathon. So I'm looking to survive, and I think that would be a good goal for 2020. I, I agree. So there's some additional things you can do to make yourself more comfortable on the day of the procedure. Um, I know, Dr. Greenberg, you love the Pronox. Love the Pronox. And we use it for a lot of different things here in the office. Do you want to explain a little bit how it works? Uh, Pronox is a 50-50 mix of nitrous oxide and oxygen. The benefit is it just takes away your inhibitions. It calms you down. Some people are super anxious, and it works really well for children, too. Uh, there are some kids who you just can't put a needle near them, and when the parents come in for just a regular dermatology visit but need a biopsy, Pronox can be a nice way of calming them down. And what, what makes this safer than old school nitrous oxide that you'd get for other things? Uh, the concentration. Yeah. So the lower concentration uh, is an analgesic, it's not anesthesia. So you don't run the risk of um, poisoning. And so can patients, how long does it last? Can they drive home afterwards? Oh, fair point, yeah. So uh, it'll last. Uh, there's a 10 minute washout period and then you can go about your business. Yeah, so one thing that's really nice is you can come, you can do this procedure and you're still safe to go home. You don't necessarily need a driver, which um, some people who have had nitrous before mm -hmm. would remember that they definitely are not functional for some time after. I did have a patient yesterday, we full face CO2 would and uh, the nitrous we had, we, because of the quarantine, everything's just been off uh, and you know, as, as we open up and as we're allowed to do more things, uh, we had run out of oxygen. so. Uh, even though we're breathing <laughs> it now, it sounds funny, the tube uh, was, was unavailable to us. So instead of uh, doing the Pronox, did topical uh, nerve blocks where I, I numbed up the facial, uh, facial sensation nerves, the, the, the fit, was it, fifth cranial nerve, <laughs> and uh, V1, V2, V3, which are in a line, uh, mid pupillary line, numbed those, and it provided anesthesia for the face, yeah, went, think, did the laser, and everything was great. Yeah, I think the blocks worked great. So. Yep. We do them all the time. Uh, PRP. Uh, this is uh, me holding uh, PRP. That's platelet-rich plasma. The platelets are just fantastic items that we have in our bodies that clot. And when they clot, uh, they stop bleeding. And then they release these growth factors. And it's, it's, I think, within the past five to seven years that we've really started utilizing PRP in the, in the dermatology space where I know that they've used it in the orthopedic space for a while, but uh, here is the spun down blood, and we use Eclipse tubes at Las Vegas Dermatology. They have a special gel separator. The, the red cells, the white cells are below the gel. The platelets and the platelet-rich plasma are above. Depending on what you're doing, uh, you take that platelet-poor plasma and throw it away, uh, and then you just use the platelet-rich plasma, which l lays right there. Yeah, there's becoming a, a, a kind of a dizzying array of applications for PRP, but we certainly like to use it to boost healing post-microneedling, so-called vampire facials, to boost healing post-CO2 laser, and obviously for patterned hair loss. So for men and women that want to boost hair growth, it's a nice way to harness your body's own growth factors and stimulate hair growth in a very safe and effective way. People are even combining it with fillers. Some people are injecting it in lieu of fillers to help try to boost yep. growth. Those are definitely off-label uses, but exciting avenues to pursue. Yeah, and we don't like to waste it, so you can leave this there. So when we do the full face CO2, you know, we'll paint the face with PRP. When we do our full face CO2, usually it includes PRP, Pronox, and the, um, the, the procedure itself. And if there's leftover PRP, platelet-rich plasma, usually we put it in a little sterile cup and people can take it home and use it that night. It's a great wound healing agent. Yeah. Uh, this just shows uh, patients treated with platelet-rich plasma versus patients treated without platelet-rich plasma, and there's less erythema um, in those patients. And really, it's meant for ablative procedures when you mm -hmm. use it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is somebody who had an IPL from another clinic. IPL is intense pulse light. It is not a laser. It's many wavelengths of light. It's a tricky device. You have to make sure the skin color of the patient is right in order to use it. I'd only use it on types two. The type three would make me a little anxious. 
I don't know about you. Yeah, but. so, I mean, we don't have an IP device have an here in, in the office, but it's, it is a nice device in the right hands because it has a wide array of applications and it's able to have a variety of applications because it's not laser. IPL is broadband light that you can gate, you can filter the light based on your desired application, but it pulses longer, it generates a lot more heat, heat and it can lead to thermal burns, injuries, ulcerations in this case. Um, so, you know, we're talking about a lot of fun things today, which is really refreshing because there's so much sadness in the world right now. So it's great to have an avenue to talk about this and share this, but everything comes with a grain of salt. And some of these devices and procedures are dangerous and you need to be done with a lot of caution. Yeah, so, you know, whether the patient was tan, whether the settings were too high, uh, whatever it was, the patient developed a burn. And I, I took her through this, uh, this process. Uh, treatments would include, believe it or not, you can use a pulse dye laser to treat on something like this. I'd probably use a, uh, you know, now that we have it, the light stem as well. Yeah. Uh, this woman here had a fractional CO2 laser, and it was not done in our clinic, but uh, the settings were too aggressive. When I do a full face, that's at one setting. So Dr. Cotter did my full face, did it at one setting. When he did my eyelids, he did them at a different setting because the skin is thinner. This woman had her chest done, and the setting was too aggressive, and she burned. Yeah, the chest is a very sensitive area so, and, and really hard to treat once the scars are there. Mm -hmm. So this would be pulse dye, maybe injections, maybe a, a repeat CO2 at a different setting. Yeah, definitely more CO2. Another uh, question? Um, not a question, but Jennifer Walsh says, these happy hours have been great. Really appreciate you guys sharing this information. It helps me become a better informed patient. Well, thank, thank you. you. That's, that's kind. Um, so uh, with that, we, we wanted to make an announcement, actually. Uh, we have a film crew here today. And uh, uh, Carl and Philip are here. They're, they're filming and, and helping us out. And uh, we've made the decision yeah, so I mean, Derm Bros started just kind of as like a lunchtime joke. Hey, let's have a happy hour. We'll call it like the Derm Bros Live and we'll share some expertise and knowledge and answer people's questions during the pandemic because it was just so depressing. Yes. And then it got a little momentum and this is our fifth one and we've been talking about, you know, what else could we do? And some people had suggested, well, why not try to shoot a reality TV show, an educational reality, almost documentary style show about dermatology and what things we do in our clinic, the diseases we treat, the lives that we touch. And so Dr. Greenberg did a lot of shooting just last weekend, um, and we're going to be doing more shooting, and um, the goal will be to help. Yeah, if you think that you have an interesting case, if your story is impressive, or you think other people would benefit from what you're going through, uh, and you want to be our patient, great, be our patient, and you may be on the show. Uh, if you want to. If you want to. It's not, it's yeah. not anything So if you, if, you, if you have if, an interesting disease, that's yeah. one thing. We're happy to take care of you always medically. But if you are interested in potentially being on the show as well, that's also a new opportunity that we're having. We're having special days of filming outside of our regular clinic hours, for example, on the weekends, on Sundays, on Saturdays, yep. um, to help accommodate that. Yeah, so we were filming from 6 to 6 uh, last weekend. Um, which, which went really well. They, they, they came to my, um, uh, I, I've been getting some MMA classes by Kim Couture. She's been you know, doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching. So uh, I know Dr. Cotter's already He's, black belt Taekwondo. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I did, gotta keep up with Dr. Cotter. He keeps me on my toes. So uh, I've been, you know, Kim's been kind enough to, to train me. And so we got some footage of that. That's great. Yeah, and uh, we look forward to the opportunity to treat other people. We did some Botox, filler, PRP, uh, laser tattoo removal skin just the other day. Treatments. Skin cancer. Um, we've got some more skin cancer uh, filming coming up. And there will be regular uh, visits that, that will go on. But we're really looking to highlight Las Vegas because I think that we've got a fantastic community here. Uh, I moved here in 2006, and I've always wanted to live in Las Vegas. I'm super proud of the city that we have. I completely agree. I'm a Vegas native. It was always the plan to come back, serve my own community. Um, and now that I'm here, I'm loving doing that. And it's great to be back home and taking care of patients in my backyard. Yeah, so we, we've got, like I said, we have a great crew. Uh, the name Vegas Durham Bros is what the show is going to end up being. I think it's going to be something special. We'd like it to keep it uh, educational. Uh, and yeah. fun. Yeah. Did you have a question? No. No. no? Have 
22 seconds. Oh, well, oh. thank you. All right. <laughs> and with that, yeah. cheers, Doc. With that cheers, Doc. Congratulations on round five. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Everybody right. saying best wishes and congratulations. Oh, that's good. That's great. Oh, that's nice. Are we, all, Are we all on all of them? I think mine's still on. Yours ended 